John Kelly joins us again. The GAA season is flying through. It seemed like we hadn't got any football for ages. And now we're getting towards the end in sight. Uh, how are you keeping, John? Good, good. Uh, give us a bit of a roundup of what happened last week. Yeah, you're right. We'd no, we'd no football in hurling for like six months of the year. And now mm. like it's just chock-a-block. There's just games. There's like 10, 12, 13 games every weekend. It's great. Um, and, you know, last weekend I was watching... Um, Mayo Galway and RTE and then the same time the Leinster semi-finals were on RTE News now and I was flicking over between them and Sky there was a game with Sky Sports mm. you know it was great in November to be having to be having uh, inter-county football in hurling you know um, as regards last weekend start off with the hurling um, the hurling championship kicked off two more teams gone um, Kilkenny won the Leinster championship for the first time in four years probably like a, a big famine for them to not win Leinster for four years but they met Galway um, in the final, Limerick had a tough game, overcome a tough Waterford challenge in the Munster final. So, so basically, Limerick and Kilkenny are in the hurling semi finals uh, on either side of the draw. And the quarter finals are this weekend. Tipperary, who bet Cork last weekend, are playing um, Galway. And um, Clare, who bet Wexford last weekend, are playing Waterford. So, they're this weekend. So two more of them teams are going to be gone. Um, so, look, the, the hurling championship, whatever with the football, the hurling championship is really. Flown mm. through, you know, we're at the final six teams already. Yeah. So, um, and just an interesting thing from last weekend, we had the first ever penalty shootout in Championship Hurling, in the Christie Ring Cup, Offaly, who were one to 33 to win the game, but well, in some bookies, um, they're playing down up in Uri. <laughs> oh, I wonder, was there some lad who put on 33 euro to win? <laughs> of course, there probably was somewhere. There's surely someone to Offaly in their accumulator, but the game ended in a draw. Uh, when the extra time ended in a draw and down one by three goals to two in the penalty shootout. So yeah. was this first ever first ever time first ever time in, in championship. Would, would you be um, a fan of uh, penalties, especially in hurling, uh, to decide a game yourself, John? I don't know. To be honest, like I think three two, like you'd be expecting most goals and penalties to be scored. Lord. There's only only the goalie and, and the free taker, like. So, yeah. you know, 3-2, you, you'd expect it would be going to like 10-9 or extra tight or sudden death or something, you know. Mm. Um, I do think in this year of all years, like, games do have to finish on the day. There's no room for replays. And if teams are level after normal time and extra time, something has to give. Now, I know something. two years ago, the GAA tried um, 65 taking competition. Yeah. And um, so, look, that that was – they tried that. This year, they're trying penalties. I, don't, I think no matter what you do, you're not going to please everyone, but – it kind of, it's same in soccer. Like people say, it's a cruel way to go out. It is a cruel way to go out. But look, what can you do? Uh, yeah, but look, as as you were saying, you'd be surprised at how many weren't scored. Three uh, two is very low for hurling penalties. That's what I'm saying. They're awfully at five penalties and they only scored two. I mean, yeah. like it's not like in a game here you have you have three lads on the line, but it's only one and one, fourteen mm. yards or twenty one yards out and a slitter. Like you'd be expecting most goals to be scored, but the down keeper uh, Stephen Keith, he he um. He saved two. He saved three penalties and scored one as well. So look, awfully are awfully are gone. They're in the third tier of hurling championship. They're gone. So down in Kildare in the Christie Ring final this weekend mm. in Crow Park. So um, and both of them teams are promoted to the Joe McDonough for next year. So massive, massive for Down and, and massive for Kildare. Big setback for Offaly, but they are what they are. They're not the strength they once were, you know. Yeah. Um, moving on to football uh, in Connacht, Mayo beat Galway by a point in the Connacht football final. Um, great game of football well, not so much a great game of football but again like Cork and Kerry the week before it was close so it was exciting right down to the end you know um, so look Mayo they got relegated from the league but look they're in the All-Ireland semi-final now and they have I won't say the easier side of the draw but you know maybe it mm-hmm. is the easier side of the draw they're playing the Munster champions in the semi-final so uh, Mayo in the semi-final um, up in Ulster Donegal and Cabin qualified for an Ulster final interesting thing about Donegal is that like this since 2011, since Jim McGuinness came in, out of the last ten years, they've qualified for nine Ulster finals over ten years. You know, I mean, before yeah. that, it took Donegal over a hundred years to reach nine Ulster finals, and now they've reached nine Ulster finals in ten years. Um, just goes to show, show, show just the goes, whole change in mindset, yeah, that McGuinness brought and his team. Yeah, brought it's in. crazy. Like, I mean, 2010, Donegal were hammered by Armagh in qualifiers. McGuinness comes in. You know, he got the under 21s to the All Ireland final. Just the belief, like, and mm. within a year, like, they were in an All Ireland semi final, the following year, they were champions, they reached another final, and he's gone now four or five years, and they're still reaching Ulster finals. And 
just the belief. It's amazing what one man can do with with belief. Like so, I suppose Jim McGuinness did kind of start that, you know. So look, nine mm-hmm. Ulster finals in ten years, and uh, they're big favourites to be Cavan this weekend. And you know, whoever wins that game is going to play realistically Dublin in the in the All Ireland semi final. And yeah. Donegal probably the one team left in the championship who yeah. would probably give Donegal or Dublin a run for their money. So I think it's going to be Donegal to be Cavan and. I mean, to look forward to Dublin, Donegal, All-Ireland semi-final. The last time Dublin have lost a championship game was to Donegal in, in 2014. So, mm. you know, and that's that's not disrespecting me who are playing Dublin in the Leinster final this again. But look, you know, I'd like to see medium, but let's call a spade a spade. I think, um, you know, I haven't seen the bookies' odds or what they're giving in handicaps or anything. But Dublin are obviously going to be massive favourites to do yeah. 10 in a row. Meat scored a... Mead scored a lot of goals last weekend again. Uh, well, probably wasn't the best spectacle, was it? The Mead Kildare game. No, it was no. You know, they scored seven goals against Wicklow and they scored five against Kildare. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know if they'll be adding to that tally on Sunday, to be honest. <laughs> you know, it's sad. Like me, Dublin have such a great history and rivalry over the years, and yeah. But then it's like Dublin with all with all teams. It's not just Dublin and Mead. The, Dublin have just pulled away from everyone. Um, I've been looking for Mead to give a good a good account of themselves, but um. You know, it's it's going to be Dublin, really, I suppose. And um, the in, an interesting, just an interesting side note on that. And the game is on Saturday, the twenty first of November, in Croke Park, Dublin and Leinster final. And it was the twenty first of November, exactly a hundred years ago, that bloody Sunday occurred, of course. So Dublin are going to wear special um, jerseys in commemoration of that. Um, you know, obviously these games would normally be in the summer, but it, it's coincidence that a hundred years on the championship, there is going to be a championship game. And uh, mm-hmm. the anniversary of it, and the day bef- the day um, the Sunday. Then uh, speaking of bloody Sunday, Tip are playing Cork in Munster football final, and you know I think this is going to be closer than than some people think. Cork Tip have gone from I think six to one down to four to one in the bookies, um, you know. And just a quick thing on Tipperary in the last ten years, like they've, you know, you might think of it as a hurling county, but they've won a minor All Ireland football. They've reached a second minor final. They've reached another twenty one final. The seniors have gone from Division 4 to Division 2 twice. They're within a kick of a ball at Division 1. And four years ago, Tip beck Cork in Munster and they reached an All-Ireland semi-final. I mean, for Tipperary to be in the last four teams in the country, like, you know. Yeah. And I, and as well as that, they have um, Colin O'Reardon back from Australia. We talk about Mark Keane, who was home from Australia, scored the winning goal against Kerry. But Colin O'Reardon was one of the best dual players in Tipperary um, before he went over to Australia. He's only 24, 23 maybe. He's back. He's got permission to play this week, and um, you know I think tipped down to four to one. I'm going to have a sneaky little, uh, sneaky little bet on tip this weekend. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to be bold, and I'm actually going to tip, tip Tipperary to win the game this weekend. Um, I think if Cork don't win, it's going to be a disaster for them because after beating Kerry, and then to lose to Tip, but you know Tipperary, all these lads have beaten Cork underage, have beaten them in senior. I think it's going to be a really close game. Um, you know, Tip haven't won Munster since 1935. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be bold and I'm going to tip tip Rary to, to win this weekend. That's my big tip of the weekend. There you go. You heard it here first, four to one. I, th- I think that's, I know, I think I must check it again. I know it had, they did go down a bit. I think it yeah. went from six to four and it could change again. But yeah. I mean, well, when I guess you were talking about Tip four or five years ago and they were playing fantastic football at that time. I think they had a couple of bad outings then. They went out early in the championship after that as well. Yeah, I suppose it's like it's like a band of the second album syndrome. I suppose you know, <laughs> 2017 wasn't that great for them. They got, last year they got bet by Limerick in the in the championship. You know, but yeah. I mean, go back to 2016. I mean, yeah, they knocked out Cork in the championship, beat, lost to Kerry in the Munster final, but then you know hammered Galway in Croke Park in an All Ireland quarter final, mm. and only lost to Mayo by five points in the semi final. Um, you know, I mean, when you think about Tipperary running Mayo to five points in all an All Ireland semi final, it just shows how far Tipperary football has come. I mean, like I say, the role of honour they're, they're after achieving in the last ten years is massive, you know. And they're in another Munster final now, and you know, like I say, it's all in the day. There's no back door, so like I, I, I can't wait for this game. It's, it's in Parky Cueve. Um, I don't think that'll make much of a difference home venue when, when there's nobody at the match. Um, Mm. But, you know, it's a massive game. Can't can't wait for it. To... Yeah, it's it's all coming thick and fast. Uh, I think in in one month it'll all be over. I think the nineteenth is the nineteenth. The ninth, uh... the nineteenth uh, of December is is the football final. Yeah. yeah, but you know it's it was kind of run off so quick, but it had to be. I mean, the mm. first after the first weekend, I think there was like nine teams gone. Then there was seven gone. Then another seven. You know, but like it was the yeah. only way to win it this year. But I mean. 
you talk about the qualifiers and a lot, the qualifiers are great. Looking forward to the draw on Monday morning. Teams having second chances and it is great. But at the same time, knockout is great as well. You know, yeah. uh, it just changes the dynamic that teams know there's no back door. I mean, if you take this year's championship, right? I mean, Kerry, if there was back door, Kerry and Tyrone and Monaghan and Galway would still be in it. Mm. You know, and they'd probably come back and knock out Cork again and, and like to these teams. But I mean, yeah. look, I mean, Kerry's gone. The teams not for mention, they're all gone, like, you know, Kerry, Monaghan and Tyrone. And, you know, you still have Tipperary, Innes and Mead still there. And there's just something about knockout. Like, it's just, yeah. you know, it's yeah. the, old, the old romantics love it's, it. It's, it's like the like, old high ball. The old yeah. love the high ball. They love the, <laughs> the knockout championship. It's a bit like the magic of the FA Cup, isn't it? That's it, yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely, lad, yeah. And it's just, it's exciting, yeah. But next year, I don't know what way they're going to do fixtures next year, but it looks like um, they're hardly going to retain the knockout, I'd say, it'll back to back to qualifiers again, you know. But then I'm not knocking the qualifiers because some counties have had fantastic runs over the years in the qualifiers, you know. But there's just something about knockouts now. Um, just does make it that bit more exciting, like, you know. Yeah, well, it's been so much better that it's all been run off in its own section that there are not breaks for clubs and everything. It's just been so much better this year, club first and then county, inter-county. Yeah, there's been, there's been no really, there's no, been no argument one between the other, you know. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it looks like the GA maybe it might be might be leaning towards a calendar next year that might be focused on that. Um, mm. uh, it just I suppose it's a shame that's the reason they kind of were had to do that was because of the COVID pandemic. Kind of they kind of made them think like you know. Yeah, um, yeah. I'd say it would take a lot of convincing for some of the stalwarts there, you know, to change anything. Yeah, well, that's why, like, the GA have made major changes over the years, but then each change, like, you know, it could be, like, 30 years between each change. Like, you know, it's like, we made it, we made a change now. We brought in a qualifier draw. We won't do anything now for another, for another few years. <laughs> we'll wait for the next pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so look, it's, it's, a mass, it's a massive weekend. Um, but, you know, like, in, in three or four weeks, it's going to be finished. I mean, after next weekend, the All-Ireland Hurling semifinals are the following week. Then the football semi-finals are on. Then the hurling final. Then the football final. So, um, yeah. all going well. And no major COVID uh, things or anything. And um, the hurling finals on the 13th of December. The football finals on the 19th of December. And, you know, I mean, Christmas six days later. would be nice. So, um, given that we'll probably be under some kind of restrictions in December, it'd be nice to have two All-Ireland finals to look forward to like you know absolutely um, yeah and depending on what restrictions were on at that stage um yeah absolutely and just a quick note on the hurling the hurling final the joe mcdonough final is before the hurling this year um and just best to look the carlo hurlers are playing Kerry and tralee this weekend um basically that's a winner takes if Kerry win there in the final if carlo win they basically knock out Kerry and, and mm-hmm. go into the final so um Will you, try, will you try to get into it, John? Intro a hedge or something? Oh, I was, yeah, I was I was hoping someone might be able to stick me in a, a VIP <laughs> ticket or something. You know, it's a killer like it's only ten minutes in the road. Yeah. And I won't be able to go, like, you know, but yeah, what can you yeah. do? I've listened under it. Actually, sorry, no, I, I bought I bought the game this morning on um on the streaming service, so I'm, I'll be tuning in that way on Saturday. Yeah, but there you go. As you were saying before, it's great. We can watch every game. That's that's the oh, yeah yeah yeah. They're, it's great to have the radio, but you know it's nice to actually see it. And the one thing that not not being there is that look at least all these streaming services are there um, to be able to watch it on the, tele- on the television or your laptop, whatever. So you know, it, and it takes a sting out with a bit, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least here locally, Carlo Kilkenny, we have the great Brendan Hennessy and Willie Quinlan to gu- guide us through on the radio as yeah, well. If you're no not better men, yeah, you no know. better men. Um, right, John. Well, anything else then for this week? Uh, just a small bit of trivia. Just, um, just I, I suppose the week that's in it, Bloody Sunday, um, hundred year anniversary on Saturday, and you know, there's a good documentary on it last weekend. And just got me thinking about Croke Park and history and all that kind of. Just a quick one about Hill 16. Yeah. Um, just you know, a lot of people kind of think Hill 16. I've heard the stories over the years that, you know, the reason it was called Hill 16 was because um, it was built from the rubble of 1916. And that's the story I've heard and probably most people have heard over the years. But I think that's the romantic view and, and people would like to think that. But that's that's actually not. The real, the real reason how Hill 16 got his name was um, it was originally called Hill 60, 60. And that was named after a hill in the Battle of Gallipoli, which was um, a war force in 1915, the First World War. Mm. The Connacht Rangers were an Irish group who were fighting with the British Army. So Hill 60 was called after them. And it was that name for a few years. And then the 1920s and the 1930s, Croke Park had thought that 
it wasn't the best name to have um, named after, it wasn't the best thing to be named the hill after um, a war in which the British Army were fighting. It was the Irish section of the British Army. So they thought it wasn't the best name to have Crow Park named after um, any, anything to do with the British Army, like, you know. Mm. So instead of Hill 60, they changed it to Hill 16 in memory of 1916, yeah. And But I've heard the story loads of times about how um, it was thought that it was built from the rubble in 1916, which I suppose the Romantics would like to believe is. Um, but no, that's, that's not actually the case. So that's it that actually came from, uh, there's a British Army connection to the original, yes, yeah, so that's why they changed it, yeah. So it's an interesting kind of snippet, I think, yeah. Yeah, very good. I've heard the other way um, a lot of times as well. I didn't really, I didn't know that. So, yeah, thanks for that little bit of information. Yeah. That documentary was fantastic as well, wasn't it? When RTE do, yeah. do a documentary actually, like I, that, yeah, they really do it well. Um, and I actually bought the book then the day after, Bloody the Field by oh, Mick yeah. Foley, a man who done the documentary. So I got that today. So um, it's a fascinating piece. Like, a lot of GA people know about it, but they don't know enough about it. And, I didn't know, I knew about it, but I didn't know enough, you know, that documentary the other night, um, or really kind of yeah. a lot of facts in it and stuff. And, you know, I think for historians, it's great. And it was a good documentary. I think it's just a massive, massive part of the GA, uh, massive part of Irish history in general, like, you know. Yeah. I, I, hundred years on, like, you know. And I think, you know, there's a lot of things in history, but that being one, it, it was so, such a strong scene in the Michael Collins movie. I think a lot yeah. of people take that in as it but they don't know any facts behind it as well. They just take that in for what it was. Yeah, that's it. And I mean, look, the thing about like Michael Collins, the thing about making films when you're doing and scenes reenactments, you're always going to get people who say that wasn't the way it was done and historical inaccuracies and, you know, how it was done in the film, like kicking the ball over the tank and all this kind of stuff. It wasn't done. And yeah, yeah, I don't, that can happen in films, but look, you're not, when you're doing something like that, you're not going to get it exactly right. Like, yeah, Look, yeah. the scene, the, the scene in the film, we kind of got, we kind of got the gist of it. What happened? There was an attack yeah, in Cold Park that day. You know, yeah. We're obviously going to get nothing, not exactly right, but um, yeah. But I think the, the documentary there and I kind of did kind of um, more or less give a, g- a good account of what happened. You know, no, nah, that was um, fantastic. And when RT do those documentaries, they really do them right. In fairness, they do. They don't do them that often, but in fairness, mm. when they do, they really come out with it, and it was, it was a great watch. Yeah. So look, um, it's almost worth years. the license fee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, have to pay your license fee, man. Have to pay your license fee. <laughs> um, yeah, well, thanks very much for that anyway, John. And the GA keeps rolling in. Uh, lots of action again this weekend. Well, enjoy it if you don't get down to Tralee to see uh, Kerry and Carlo, if you don't get to sneak in anywhere. Enjoy it on the TV anyway. Yeah, thanks, my man. Thank you. Cheers. Talk to you later, John. All right. Good luck, good luck.